Hey everybody, Ron here of Ron's Trains and Things, and you have tuned in to the May edition of Railroad Wrap. I want to give you just a little word of disclaimer here at the beginning of this video because as we recorded this video, uh, when we got the recording back, it had a few issues with both the audio and the video. Now, it's still a watchable video. I hope that you'll watch it, but I really strive for quality on this channel and this really just didn't measure up to the audio and video quality that I like. Just be aware that uh, it was an issue in the recording and this is all kind of a new thing for us recording this show and we are working on it, I promise we're going to get some of these issues worked out before the next edition. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the show despite those issues, and thanks for watching. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one-day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Well, good day, and welcome to another edition of Railroad Wrap. I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I'm you glad to click, be you here. You gotta click the little. You gotta click the little bell. Gotta click the bell. Is yeah, that so is that part thing. of like when? When you sign up to have a YouTube channel, is that something that they make you like? Do you have to swear that you'll everybody will say? And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can get. You don't you don't swear to say it, but they tell you if you don't say it, your channel will die in like six months. So you know, it's, wow. it's the only way to make a channel grow is to tell people to click the little bell icon. So. I like I think is a Drew Warrington soft sale on this at the end where he asks to subscribe, but he gives you the out on you don't have to click the bell. So <laughs> It's almost like if you'll just do <laughs> yeah. this part of it, I'll let you off the hook on the click in the bell. Which and makes somehow you think, the way it's all like, right, I'll do him a favor. I'll click clarify, the bell too, you know, I guess, I while I'm it. here. So I, got exactly. a I got a different pitch because people people insisted I needed to be on YouTube. And I'm like, do I have to be on YouTube? Do I have to put my podcast on YouTube? And like people keep subscribing. And I'm like, please, just stop subscribing to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Stop how's, that, how's that working for you? Yeah. How's that going? That's not going very well. Are Are they subscribing? If they're not subscribing, then you're you're doing all right. Yeah. No, <laughs> That's I, what you told. I, I got do. almost. I got almost a thousand subscribers, and I've done as little as I possibly can to promote it. Wow. Well, there you go. There you that, go. Yeah. You're almost yeah. monetized. Yeah. Thousand yeah. Subs a thousand subscribers within a year. And uh, four thousand hours of, of watch time, which I'm sure you've got with a thousand subscribers, with with uh, you know with your podcast. Yeah, you're almost at the level of being monetized. So, well, yeah. well hey, yeah. I, I I think I think everybody knows my uh, my, my co-hosts here, but uh, just to make that official, uh, glad today uh, as every time on uh, Railroad Wrap to be joined by uh, Lionel Strain, the uh, Host, founder, and host of a Modeler's Life podcast, and Tony Cook, who is the editor of Model Railroad News, HO Model Collector, and we see uh, more and more all over YouTube and Facebook uh, yeah. sharing his wonderful railroad and model railroad knowledge. We uh, appreciate that and enjoy that, Tony. So, Tony does you. every show. Thank does you. every show. That's right. He's on all of them. So. Well, hey, I wanted to give a little update from uh, our first episode last month. Uh, I was pretty excited about the, the response to it. We had uh, a, a good number of views and a lot of really positive comments. I was going to share just a couple with you. Uh, uh, Ron Joyce, who is actually one of my uh, uh, newer uh, supporters and, and, and viewers, uh, said, you know, thanks for doing this. I totally enjoyed it. Really needed a couple of laughs. Uh, Derek Alexander said, really enjoyable uh, banter and news and liked our, our chemistry. Uh, someone whose channel is called River Belt Line HO Model Railroad said, I like the format. I would suggest 30 minutes weekly or an hour monthly. So, you know, we, we, we had to talk about that. And yeah. then Eminem Rails had my favorite comment, which said, uh, Timestamp five minutes and thirteen seconds is what you came for. Come on, boys, let's talk about railroads. Oh wow! <laughs> well, 
Well, hey, last time we were together, I was talking about getting ready to go to Deschler, Nebraska, to the uh, the Fremo event that was put on by uh, Spring Creek uh, Model Trains, uh, which, of course, I did go to, and probably a lot of uh, our viewers have already seen the video that I posted about that. Had a lot of fun. Um, Fremo is an interesting thing, and I, it's the first time I've been to an event that was just a Fremo event, um, because... You know, those kind of events, they're really about running trains and, and about um, rail fanning, you know, model model trains. Not necessarily so much about the, the, the scenery, not uh, so much about more of those show kinds of, of things that we think about. There was no swap meet or, or vendors or anything like that. Just a lot of guys there with, with modules uh, that enjoyed running trains. It did have a few scenes that were really photogenic, and I got some nice videos of that... Uh, uh, that I'll share with folks, but uh, had a good time. Uh, wasn't a large crowd there, but again, it was mostly about the folks who brought their modules and brought their trains and, and were running them. Uh, but the ones that were there were really having a good time, and uh, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed meeting a lot of folks. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen the video, uh, be sure and, and and check that out, and I'll put a link to it in the description down below. You can see all the highlights from that weekend. Yeah, and if you go to that video and you have yet, don't forget to click the little bell icon. Yeah. After you subscribe. After you subscribe, click that little bell icon. Right. So you can catch future <laughs> videos. <laughs> well, it seems like that, that whole Fremo and the, the T track, all, I hear more and more on all of that stuff. Like, I know there's one happening in Northern Illinois this first weekend of May that I think that's becoming a really neat. Yeah, I mean, I know it was around because I would see them at shows in the past, but that seems to be generating a lot more interest of guys building like their piece of a big puzzle. And what the one in, I know if you watch your video, you can see it all, but the one there in Nebraska, how many scale miles did it end up being an end scale? I remember it was something amazing. The end, the end scale setup was 17 scale miles when it was all said and done. Uh, which is something in a neighborhood of 580 some odd feet of of mainline run, uh, and uh, it, it was. I mean, it took. I, I didn't actually time a train running all the way uh, around the thing, but it, it took a long time. It took a long time to walk around, let, let alone to, to, to run a train at a scale speed around. I should mention, I guess, because it's local for me. But uh, but this weekend, uh, today, as a matter of fact, as as this. Uh, show comes out is the uh the local train show in joplin missouri and uh that should be interesting i've not been i've been to the springfield show several times i've never been to this joplin one so looking forward to making an appearance down there and seeing uh, what they have to offer this year it does seem like more and more the shows are coming back i saw the one that happens out at kci near the airport here in kansas city that hasn't you know for at least a year or so now does have an august date for this year so yeah they're we're, it's coming back. Well, Lionel, since you're talking, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think you got a couple yeah. of interesting websites you're gonna you're gonna introduce us to and tell us about this evening. I am. I'm gonna give a shout out to a fellow named uh, Rob Arsenault, who lives in Edmonton, Alberta, and he has a website called WeatherMyTrains.com. And I interviewed him last night. Won't be out for a while, of course, because here at the old AML, we uh, try to keep our for those of anybody that's wondering why, if sometimes, you know, we record like a couple of months ahead and it takes two, three months to four months to get the recording out. If they're worried about the uh, podcast going bad, we keep them in the fridge. We keep our comedy fresh. We keep it in the fridge. So it's, it's not a it's not any kind of a problem. Right next to uh, the yeah. age, don't they? Yeah. The age, like, you know, because you're in Kentucky there, it's like fine bourbon. The, Absolutely. You do the podcast and you put it like, what, in a wood tank of some kind, and it's aged for so long. Before yeah. You, it's before wood, yeah. yeah. At first it was just a wood tank, but we've now constructed a full, uh, uh, complete log building okay. made out of some of the finest old uh, trees in Kentucky, in the deep forests of Kentucky. And uh, so we keep them in there. It's our vault inside a vault for basically. Anyways, we talked to a fellow named uh, Rob Arsno, weathermytrains.com. And this guy does spectacular weathering work. And uh, me and the mailboy talked to him. And the other one I wanted to talk about, I just wanted to give him a shout out. Now, there's a couple of pictures that have gone by while we've been talking about it because uh, uh, Ron's been working the buttons there. 
And uh, even though it's been, how can we stretch this? Like, what does this mean? You keep doing this behind the scenes, and I don't know what that means. I, I, um, and then <laughs> <laughs> keep talking, keep talking. And for God's sake, and for God's sake, Ron, do up a button there, will you? Like, what do you do? This isn't a Vegas show for crying out loud. <laughs> Um, and, and, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is something that Tony can help me talk about is I think we need to talk more, Tony, about, uh, Chris Palmieri and his home shops, uh, endeavor, which is basically, this is a fella that has uh, got involved with tangent scale models and he's, uh, ordered numerous over 1500 PS 4750 hoppers from tangent and he is painting them for freelance model railroads i think there's about seven freelance model railroads and uh, i got a message from uh, dave abelis that uh he sent a couple to dave's layout the onondaga cutoff and right here the conrail's onondaga cutoff i'm wearing your shirt dave and, uh, and dave also wrote a book signals and interlocking if you want to get it all sold out already you're gonna have to wait a while um but anyways, this is going to be really cool. This guy's got his stuff together. It's homeshops.net. Mm -hmm. And Tony and I interviewed him a while ago. Again, we put that in the in the vault, in the freezer, and it's going to be fresh when we get it out there. But it's going to be really cool. Everybody watch for home shops. This is something that's going to really work. It's, uh, it's uh, tangent cars lettered and painted for freelanced model railroads. I think there's seven different railroads for the first uh, run. And I, we've got a couple of pictures here of early samples that Ron is sharing with us mm -hmm. that Chris shared. And those cars are touring various layouts, these early samples that he did. And then I think the run is expected either late 2021 or somewhere about then. If you go to homeshops.net, there's a countdown and information on that website that'll kind of keep you up to date on it. But kind of certainly an, an interesting project. The photographs of these are absolutely spectacular. Uh, if, if the photographs do them justice at all, they're he's doing really, really beautiful work for sure. And then he stirred me to a fellow named David Rodriguez, I believe, and he ha his layout is the Agnes Street Spur, Spur S U S P U R Spur. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's a, one of the he's one of the railroads that's uh, been. Done. This is going to be neat. This is going to be really neat. I'm telling you, this is going. to Chris, you're going to hit a home run with this one. This is going to take off. Tony, I think you got a great new locomotive you want to share with steam, us. Steam, 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 and not big boys. Although Atherin did just deliver a new run of in-scale big boys. And when you think steam lately, that's what always comes up. But no, we've got a couple of interesting projects that have been announced recently. Broadway Limited Imports will be doing an HO scale brass hybrid of the CSA 2 class Union Pacific Challenger. That's the early challengers. And I've got some, the pictures that we're showing here are the pilot sample uh, that is just, that Broadway got recently. This will have the Paragon 4 electronics in it. It's due out this fall. So it's kind of that, I, this whole brass hybrid series, if you've never seen one or gotten one, is really neat in that it combines kind of the best of both. It's that highly detailed handcrafted brass but then it's also got the gear and running stuff of what you'd expect of a contemporary awesome running, you know, plastic or die cast model. So it's a little bit of both that the boiler cab, that stuff is brass, the tenders brass, but then, you know, the innards and everything is contemporary uh, mechanisms and such. So nice piece. And that's a giant Union Pacific steam locomotive, probably second road only to the big boys. And that comes out in the fall. And Broadway has also shown early shots of an FEF Northern, a 484, that'll be, it looks like it's a die cast one. So it'll be in their Paragon 4 line. And there's yet another FEF Northern run that's coming out as well from another company. So loads of steam and not all big boys. So steam continues to be super popular, I guess. Awesome. Yeah. And the, the, the Challenger, I, like you say, I know the big boys getting all the press right now, mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, Challenger is a cool locomotive. I don't, I don't know if I've ever told my Challenger story, but uh, back in, I think it was 2004 uh, in January, uh, the Super Bowl that year was going to be in Houston, Texas. And the Challenger was making a, a circuitous trip to, to Houston for the Super Bowl. And as it often does, it came across Missouri from Kansas City to St. Louis. I had no idea it was coming. 
Uh, but at the time, I lived in a little town called Otterville, Missouri, right on the Sedalia subdivision, and my office was three blocks from the tracks. And I'm sitting in my office, and I hear this steam whistle. And <laughs> I, I was about two seconds, I was out the door and in my van, and it just so happened that my camera was in the van at the time, and I managed to, to run down to, uh, to Tipton, Missouri, which is about 10 miles from where I lived, and caught up with it uh, as it uh, made a, a stop on a siding there. And they caught a few photographs. I'm showing one of those photographs right now. So, I, you know, cool. it, it, it's, a, it's a fun memory. So whenever I think of the Challenger, I always kind of think of that. And, and yeah, this is a great-looking great looking model, and I think uh, people will, uh, will really, really enjoy that. Well, hey, today uh, happens to be the 50th anniversary of the founding of Amtrak. And uh, you two guys had an opportunity to, uh, to do an interview on A Modeler's Life uh, with, with Matt Donnelly uh, uh, about that. And that just came out this last week. Uh, but why don't you tell us just a little bit of, uh, about that podcast, Lionel, and uh, then we'll be sure and link it in the description down below so people can go and listen to it. Yeah. And quick little, oh, no, we don't have that. Um, anyways, Tony, it was Tony's suggestion. And he got a hold of Matt Donnelly from... Uh, Pull your mic in a little closer. I can barely hear you. All right. I don't. I, how about this? Can you That's better. That? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can get it much closer. We'll have to work on our sound. Well, you know what? We'll have an audio technician help us. Okay. Um. Anyways, uh, Tony arranged this. Uh, Matt Donnelly is. Uh, he's in charge of social networking and and marketing or something at uh, at uh, Amtrak. And uh, he came on and told us all about the 50th anniversary, and they uh, they uh, talked about paint schemes and all uh, the paint schemes through the years and Amtrak through the years. It was really really interesting. It's very very cool. And I don't. How did you get a hold of him, Tony? Uh, you know, I'm trying to remember now how I first connected with him. Um, I don't remember now, but I knew it'd be a great show. And I mean, his it was amazing with him talking about and giving us all the information on the different paint schemes that Amtrak did over the years, uh, you know, the, the 50th anniversary locomotives. And it still seems impossible to believe that Amtrak is 50 years old. That, you know, it, Amtrak basically for me has always been around because as a little kid, it was the rainbow yard stuff that I remember seeing, but I don't know. And then always the threat of, Oh, you know, Amtrak, you know, funding and all that. So it's like 50 years that it's incredible. Uh, Model Railroad News and HO Collector Editions right now both have Amtrak features in them. And if you go to shop.whiteriverproductions.com, we've got two Amtrak books delivering this summer. So there's loads of Amtrak stuff out there. And I believe it's maybe the end of this month. It's around Memorial Day. All the trains go back to regular, like, daily service. The CZ and the Empire Builder and everything get back to running all the time. So now there have been there have been a number of, of models kind of released in, in various Amtrak schemes over the years for this 50th anniversary, too, haven't there? Uh, there's a group of, like, six, and some are P42s, and then there's a, at least one Charger that'll be 50th anniversary painted. That the Some of those are already starting to come out. In fact, this week, uh, Amtrak 100, the one in the, like, Midnight Blue, I think they call it, uh, it rolled out of Beach Grove and went on the Cardinal to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, I'll have a picture of that in our first edition of Diesel Era in Rail News that'll be out this summer. But yeah, those are starting to hit now. And heads up for anybody, it's an HO modeler, the new Genesis version of the Genesis GE locomotive for Amtrak is coming from Athern. And the information I have on them that they will deliver in mid-June, and if you've not pre-ordered one, you need to start asking and checking with dealers, just like the N-Scale Big Boy is hard to come by now. Uh, I've been told that those first run of Genesis P42s are basically sold out from Horizon Athens. So start looking if you uh, didn't reserve them. So, Lionel. Lionel? Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Lionel! Mm hmm. Okay. There he is. Okay. Hey, do you remember Andy Minusco? And I'll give Andy. you a hint. If you if if it's not ringing a bell, do you remember back in 2018 at the National Train Show in Kansas City, and kind of the hit of the the modular layouts there was this humongous bridge 
Uh, it was a, a 25 foot long replica of the Nicholson Viaduct. You remember that? I do actually. I think yeah. yeah. Well, Andy Minusco is uh, the modeler who built it, and I I've gotten to know Andy a little bit uh, back when I first started on YouTube through YouTube Model Builders, and and we've been Facebook friends. Uh, and he's uh, been working on uh, another module as he works with several of these modular groups uh, as they set up at different shows. And the thing he's been working on is this uh, octagon kind of a, a connection piece that literally could be the center of of a layout that can star out in eight different directions. And it's right. something he's been working on for a while. But he posted uh, some photos that I'm showing now uh, on Facebook this week. And uh, I just wanted to share a little bit and kind of give him a shout out because what he's doing here is uh, it, this is not simple track work. Uh, now he's got uh, using the several fast tracks uh, fixtures in order to do this. Uh, he said uh, a number six that he's had for a while, the, uh, a fairly recent number six Y. Uh, turnout uh, that they have, as well as their uh, their quad crossing, and uh, I tell you, this is I, it's just impressive modeling, and I thought it was worth a worth a mention, and, and wanted to make sure that we uh, shared a little bit, and look forward, Andy, to seeing more of, of what you do as you tackle some pretty major modeling projects here for the for the modular crowd. I've got I have one other thing I wanted to say okay. on. Uh, electronic stuff at Midwest Model Railroad in Independence, Missouri. They now have the full, complete line of soundtracks accessories. Yes. Cool. As, as this video is coming out, uh, my assistant editor, Shane Mason, and I are probably down there right now, and he's doing. we're doing an install video uh, showing some of that. So MidwestModelRR.com, which I think you can also get Modeler's Life gear there if you need you know a hat or shirt or That's something right. to show that you're part of the aml nation just go right uh, a, scroll right across the navigation bar mm -hmm. to aml and boom there it is so yeah the store that just keeps getting better now fully loaded with soundtrack stuff it's like a, it's like a it's like shopping in a real life walther's catalog That's a yes fact. it is That's uh, ron tell us just 30 seconds what is this latest video you've made about how to clean track without Use oh, sure. all the standard. Well, literally, literally, what I promised in the uh, title and on the thumbnail is that you could just stop cleaning track altogether. Um, I, I've been doing some research over the past couple of years, spurred by a couple of videos as well as an article that Joe Fugate wrote in a column in in uh, Model Railroad Hobbyist. Uh, about various kinds of cleaners. We've heard a lot of people talking about isopropyl alcohol, which I think everybody has used forever to clean track, and about why it's bad for the track. And I've heard a lot of different reasons why that was the case. And, and uh, you know, what, what we really learned uh, primarily through Joe initially was that uh, many of the cleaners and solvents that we use are polar solvents, which means that uh, on a molecular level, they, they have a charge to them, which actually causes a, a problem they call micro arcing, that as the wheels roll over the track and the, in the presence of that um, uh, electronic field, it causes basically the equivalent of a tiny little bolt of lightning between the wheels and the rail and it damages the rails. So I was talking about uh, cleaning rails with non-polar cleaners. And uh, my favorite among those is, is mineral spirits, but there are some others, uh, CRC, contact cleaner with protectant and crc makes a number of products don't get them mixed up because the others are not as good but the contact cleaner with protectant uh, but then uh, kind of the the heart of it was uh, treating the track with a product called no ox id a special electrical grade something or other <laughs> uh, but no ox id uh, which is similar to a dielectric grease which will uh prohibit uh, corrosion, it prohibits oxidation, uh, it inhibits this problem of micro-arcing, and uh, literally uh, the claims that many people have had is they, they use no ox on their track and then periodically will run a vacuum to pick up dust, but other than that haven't cleaned their track in as long as five, six, seven years. Uh, wow. I haven't had the no ox on mine that long, but, but I have discovered that since applying it, uh, a little bit. Of, I have a fairly dusty basement, so you know I'll run a, a, a vacuum over the main line, and everything runs like a charm. So yeah, been 
very impressed with it. And the response to that video has been really interesting. I thought I would get a lot of uh, uh, criticism and back talk from it, but uh, actually I found that a lot of people have used no walks and like it, and a lot of other people are saying, yeah, I'm really frustrated with my isopropyl alcohol. I think I'll give it a try. So it'll be interesting. It's like the that. mineral spirits, the same bottle of mineral spirits, like you find a Dollar General or Walmart. Yeah, that kind of, and yeah. Just, I, use and the, I use the odorless mineral spirits. Uh, but it's uh, it's a very non-polar, so it doesn't have that problem of having the molecular charge, and, and so it uh, it doesn't promote that micro arcing. Because anything you put on your track is going to leave a certain amount of residue in those little micro scratches and abrasions on your track. Uh, the question is, you know, what properties does that substance have? And this inhibits the micro arcing, and so it, it, it helps to limit the damage to your rails over time, whereas other cleaners like isopropyl alcohol and anything that contains water uh, will promote micro arcing and ultimately damages your track over time. So, now, Lionel has told me that I should take apart, you know, my test loop is Cato Unitrack. He said, okay, just take it apart and put it in the little holders in the dishwasher that you <laughs> put knives and forks in. But yeah. he told me, don't buy the cheap store no. brand auto no, get, so get Cascade or Electrol or something like that, and make sure I'm using that little blue rinse liquid, too. And I do that all the time, and so I don't have a lot of problems with my track. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I got, go ahead. I was going to say, if your track, if you need to vacuum your track because it's dusty, uh -huh. you're not running your trains enough. Well, that yeah, your but... My dust problem is because I'm in the process of building this expansion, and so I've got sawdust and stuff from the building well, not that's just, going on. But it's you know. not. I wasn't talking just about you, Ron. But your your videos are for the masses. You're right. Believe okay. it or not, this believe it or not, this isn't just about you. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. But you were mentioning your people, and I'm th I'm thinking. How many layouts are there out there? Where, just run your trains. That'll keep your track from getting dusty. That's what they're there for. Run those trains. Get them going back and forth, up and down. That's actually, the. if you want to keep your track clean, it's no different than the real railroad. You see rusty track, a train hasn't been there long for a while. If you, uh, you know, keep your track clean, run your trains. And I mean, you'll have to, you'll probably have to clean the wheels, but you won't have to clean the track very much. Uh, Tony, you mentioned the Unitrack. Someone actually left a comment on that video this week and said that they use, I, I believe it was Unitrack or a sectional track similar to that, and were, they were having some trouble with uh, corrosion over time in the joints. And so they used no walks in the joints to help uh, reduce that corrosion. They said it made all the difference in the world oh, in, uh, in the electrical the contact between oh, the okay. joints. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we gotta get. Uh, can I get a? Can I have a drink? This is like way past nineteen minutes. Well, oh. with that, I think we we will wrap up uh, for sure. But uh, there's a couple of videos linked on your screen right now that uh, that you may want to check out. One of them to that no walks uh, video uh, about track cleaning, and the other one to the uh, the video about the Deschler Fremo event. And I hope you all will join us again next month. It'll be June as uh, we bring you uh, episode number three of Railroad Wrap. And we look forward to seeing you again. Ten, Lizzie?